You're going to be sorry for that, Wilbur. Please forgive me, Stella. I'm afraid I lost my temper. You shouldn't have laughed at me. Why not? The idea of a righteous Judge Harrington trying to buy back his honor. <laughs> oh, my dear, it's very funny. <laughs> I don't like to resort to the persuasion of money, but I've come to learn it's the only thing you understand. The answer is no. I've got what I want, and I intend to hang on, so you might as well make the best of it. I'm not going to argue with you, Stella. I've tried all I can to be reasonable to make you understand. I've pleaded with you. I've even begged. But that's all over now. What's left of my pride won't let me go on any longer. Deceiving my family, destroying my self-respect. Your self-respect? Well, the only respectable thing about you is that title of yours. And how long do you think you're going to have that once I open up my mouth about us? <sighs> what a blind fool I've been. You think I'm bluffing, don't you? Well, you just wait and see. Because nobody drops Stella Dean. When I get through with you, your name won't be fit for the gutter. I'll see that they knock you off that bench so fast you will not want to hit you. The mighty Jack! in the Lombardi case. It's quite a victory for the force. Yeah, I suppose it is. Whenever we can make a murder conviction stand up on circumstantial evidence, it adds a lot of new teeth to the law. talk to you about that. The Kirby's. What about them? Dad. 
I know I, I haven't been exactly the kind of a son you'd stand up and cheer about. I've done a lot of crazy, wild things in my life and, and been in some pretty touchy scrapes. But there's one thing I've been more than careful to avoid. Doing anything that might bring shame or scandal to the Harringtons. I want to do as much for the Kirby's. Meaning what, Chris? Meaning Stella Dean. What do you know about Stella Dean? That you're in love with her? And that you've been seeing her on the sly for a long time. I didn't know that spying was one of your accomplishments, Chris. It isn't, Dad. It's just that I happen to know Stella Dean. I, I've known her for a long time. Why have you waited until now? It wasn't important until now. Only when it directly affected you, huh? I'm disappointed, son. I would hoped that my conduct accounted for something, even if you didn't stand to lose by it. You're wrong, Dad. It hurt a lot more than you'll ever know. You see, I happen to think that Mother's a pretty wonderful woman. I'd be the last to deny that. Chris, I... I can hardly expect you to believe this. Uh, I'm not sure I have the right to even ask you, but... If there was once something between Stella and myself, it no longer exists. She will never again come between your mother and me. Have you told that to her? Yes, Chris. I told her. She wasn't prepared to accept it, however. You mean she refused to let you go? Yes. Let me talk to her, Dad. No, no. The responsibility is mine, son. All right, Dad. Now I've got to go out to the Kirby's. I. I just wanted to have this talk before breaking the news to Alice's folks. this, Chris. Do you usually go around with an empty wallet in your pocket? Not usually. We found a lot of money near the body. Isn't it a fact, Harrington, that that money came from this wallet? That you went to that cottage specifically to buy your way out? No, that's not true. All right, Chris. Why did you go there? I want the truth. I told you the truth. I went there to tell Stella I was going to marry Alice Kirby. You said you and Stella were only friends. We were. Why was it so important that you tell her about your wedding plans? Let's try this besides Arrington. Stella Dean loved you. You told her about the Kirby girl. She threw a fit and refused to let you off the hook. There was an argument and you killed her. 
No, that's not the way it was at all. Stella and I were only friends, nothing more. Oh, come on, Harrington. Stella Dean wasn't the platonic friendship type, and you know it. She played the game one way, for keeps. That's not true. Boy, I wish I had your recipe, Harrington. It'll take a lot of doing to keep two women on the string at the same time. And during this time, she never mentioned anyone else that might have had a motive? As long as you're here, we'd like to ask you some questions, too, if you don't mind. You want to step in the chief's office? Can you sit down, please? We're sorry to inconvenience you, Miss Kirby. I'll do anything I can to help Chris. Anything. We know how you feel. Alice, how well did you know Stella Dean? I didn't know her at all. Were you aware of the fact that Chris knew her? No, he never mentioned it. You two only became engaged today, didn't you? Yes, this morning. When he uh, proposed to you and you accepted, what did he say? He was very pleased. Well, I'm sure he was, but what exactly did he say? I don't know quite what you mean. Well, for example, did he want to go directly to your folks and tell them the good news? No, he, he said he had something important he had to do first. But he didn't say what it was. Just that it couldn't wait. That the success of our marriage might well depend on it. Well, he seemed worried, so I didn't think I should question him about it. And then he left to do whatever it was he had to do? Yes. Did you see him again after that? No. Thank you, Alice. Chris didn't do it, Tom. He couldn't do such a thing. Murder? My son accused of murder? He hasn't been accused of anything yet, Judge. He's just being held as a suspect. Why? Because he's been involved in a few harmless scrapes? He had nothing to do with it. Nothing. And there's nothing to worry about. We have to explore every possibility. I'm sure you understand that better than anyone. You'll need your help, Judge. Thank you. 
Chris, I'm sorry. I don't have to tell you how I felt about your father. He's one of the finest men I ever knew. Now, you've got yourself a real murderer. A man who killed his father. Now, look. What happened was purely an accident. Now, just Kirby's going to defend you. He's waiting in there with your mother. If I can't convince anybody else I'm innocent, what chance have I got with him? There's one thing you don't seem to understand. Proving a man's innocence is as much a part of our job as proving his guilt. But so far, you haven't given us one thing to go on. Not one. I gave you my word I didn't do it. That isn't enough. You know, it's the hardest thing in the world for a man to get himself accused of a crime unless he's either involved in it or else hiding the truth. Now, which is it with you? Remember this, Chris. If you are covering up for someone, you're guilty of a crime your father despised above all others. Your lawyer's waiting. Then, as far as you know, there's no one else who might have had a motive for the crime. Well, we checked every known possibility. Friends, employers, even waiters at the Golden Parrot. Well, that doesn't leave me very much, does it? I'm afraid not, Mr. Kirby. Are you all right, son? I'm all right, Mother. We're here to help you, just as your father would have done. This has been quite a shock to all of us, Chris. As Alice's father, I feel compelled to do everything I can for you. I think we should have a talk in private. I can only tell you what I've already told them. I had nothing to do with it. Chris, Chief Richards here has briefed me on the evidence. It's mighty damaging. I'm sure you realize that. I told them the truth. I didn't kill her. I, I swear I didn't. Who did? I don't know. Will you swear to that, too? Chris, I asked you a question. Chris, you do know. You know who killed that girl. No, no. Chris, you've got to tell me who it was. Who was it? Who? I told you I don't know. Now, now leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Chris, men have been put to death on a lot less evidence than we have against you right now. Now, who killed that girl? words to me were about you, Mother. He loved you very much. He swore that she'd never again come between you. That's, that's why he had to kill her. Chris, your own father. How could you? May God forgive you. Graveyards are filled with people who couldn't call you a liar. Why did you have to pick a man like your father? They don't believe me. I told them the truth, uh, and they don't believe me. Jim. Sheesh. I thought I'd seen him, but this does. Well, I'll say one thing. It was a great performance. He had a thousand deaths before he lit the fuse. But why would a guy go through so much trouble for a defense that ain't going to help him at all? That's why you're wrong, George. You can't help him. The one man that could have refuted his word is dead. It leaves room for a reasonable doubt. The difference between life and death. And what do you say, Smitty? I say it's just fantastic enough to be true. You don't mean you really believe him. You heard what the chief said. 
If the boy was out to create a reasonable doubt, that's what he's done. Come on, George. If we could prove that the judge had been at Saladin's, Chris's claim wouldn't seem so fantastic after all. Had to be moving the busted up like that, huh? of a loose tire bolt would be as good as an eyewitness. Looks like Stella took her Harrington's repairs. Judge was here all right. You find the wheel print? Yeah, two sets of them. One matches the Harrington buggy, loose bolt and all. Other set probably made by the man with the kindling wood. Looks like you had yourself a good hunch, Smitty. Yeah, hunch is all it is. All we know is that Harrington's rig was here. It doesn't prove murder or that the judge even knew Stella. Mm -hmm. She didn't drape herself in a coat like this on her salary. Yes, this is mine, too. You're sure about that? I've been a dressmaker for 18 years. I certainly ought to know my own creations. You say Miss Dean never brought anyone else with her into the shop? No, she always came in alone. Well, how about this? Oh, good heavens, no. I couldn't possibly afford to carry merchandise like that. Who could? Let me see. Hillman's in Cheyenne would be the closest. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, this is our coat. There's no question about it. Mrs. Warner, are you the only sales lady in the fur department of the Hillman Company? No, there are two others, but being in charge of the department, I make it a point to supervise each sale. We like to ensure the satisfaction of every customer. I see. You say you remember this particular transaction. Was the lady alone? No, there was a gentleman with her. Can you describe him? Well, he was a distinguished-looking man. Mm, in his 50s, perhaps. Uh, very attractive and very pleasant. Could this be the man? Yes, that's him, all right. You're sure? Absolutely. Did he pay cash for the coat? No, as I recall, he gave me a bank draft. Yes, it was a draft. I remember getting Mr. Hillman to approve it. Thank you very much, Mr. Warner. You've been very helpful. Not at all. Good day. Well, Martha Harrington never owned a fur coat. Judge Harrington drew out $1,000 the morning of the murder. $1,000? That's exactly the amount we found at the cottage. I guess I have to concede the boy was telling the truth. Looks like that does it, huh, Smitty? As soon as we get our hands on that bank draft. Boy, was I wrong about that Harrington kid. Here I thought we had an open and shut case. There's no such thing as an open and shut case, George. Just open and shut mind. Even when things looked hopeless for Chris, Alice's loyalty had never wavered. It was a real pleasure to place Chris in her custody. 